How's it going, folks? I'm Matt, and this is Photosyntech. Welcome to another episode of The Grow Show. This week, I thought, you know, it's been about a year since I did the full-on tour of the grow room, and I've expanded my space, so I thought I'd show you guys what I have growing on all over the place today. Let's get into it. Okay, so if you watch the channel at all, um, you're going to recognize this space, of course. This is where I do meet the grower, meet the industry, and any other sort of talky type, um, you know, streams, that sort of thing. And this is the studio space, but this also doubles as an indoor gardening space. So let me show you what I've got going on here. Okay, so pull that camera out a little bit. This is the, the wall of green where I don't really do a lot of cannabis gardening. Um, I'm going to eventually, potentially, uh, well, earth box. Um, there's been a lot of feedback when I uh, said that I got this thing. Everybody wants me to grow autos in it, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and try an auto in it. More on that to come here. I still need to make up some soil for it, otherwise just some storage. And uh, shout out to our sponsor, Mars Hydro. Up top here, I've got the aloe and a couple of products that I've been playing with some new ones. Coconut water powder and some uh, Gaia Green uh, soluble kelp. I'll be talking more about this coconut water powder in another uh, very, very soon upcoming episode. But uh, the point is, these are some uh, foliar things and just a succulent plant there. But I got a bunch of aloe and some soluble kelp and whatnot. That will be foliar stuff, but again, more on that to come. Squish station. Ah, uh, you know. This is where the magic happens, the, the solventless press. Uh, just a quick shout out, low temp. Uh, they got a big sale going on until the 10th, guys, July 10th. Uh, go check them out. Uh, I love my press. Um, huge shout out to those guys for sending that over. Okay, and then of course we've got the veg tent. So I got a bunch going on in here right now. I've got some plants uh, back from uh, my buddy's place where I store them when I'm doing other things and don't have enough uh, space for extra plants. So, uh, well, here in the corner, the return of Freak Show. Yeah, that's right, he's back, and this time he's pissed. So uh, I do plan on growing that plant out into full flower and collecting pollen, and we will be doing some breeding experiments coming up. Otherwise, I've got some slightly neglected plants here. Um, well, here's the two mothers. There's Marge and Bertha, and they're in need of some work. Uh, Bertha in particular, she's looking a little yellowy. Uh, I did do a top dress with some castings and uh, some compost and stuff, but I think I should have done some dry amendments. But she's also suffered the worst from that sulfur incident that I had a few weeks back, is what it is. Uh, this here is the Maui Wowie. We've got Cheese Dog in the back. Both of those were just harvested and both of those did exceptionally well. Like huge thumbs up on that. Um, running those again. Might do one of them in just the 3x3 three three tent all by itself. I've got time. Uh, you guys will see there's still uh, plants in there. But I'm thinking of doing either this one or this one is just a single plant in that 3x3, three three, training it out a bit more and seeing where I can take it. Uh, otherwise, we've got some purple haze, critical mass, power plant, just clones of the stuff that's in the 3x3. Three three. I don't know what I'm going to be doing with these if I'm going to be running them. If you're in the Calgary area, though, and you want a plant, reach out to me, okay? I'd be more than happy to hook you up. Um, I've got extras. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, what's going on in the veg tent here. Not too much. I mean, it's, you know, getting ready for the next run. I've got some other stuff going on outside. But first, let's head on out to the front yard so I can show you guys what's going on out there. And here we are. So, uh, potatoes and marigolds. Corn, marigolds. A Boston Terrier. <laughs> Corn, uh, yeah, I said that. Uh, potatoes, marigolds. I got some tomatoes going on here. Potatoes, petunias, potatoes, potatoes, petunias, potatoes, potatoes. And I really need to mow my lawn. So just lots of veggies out front here. And of course, what's going on in the backyard here? Yeah, we got strawberries. We got garlic that's actually all done now. That's why it's all laying over and looking brown. Peas and peas, asparagus. A couple shoots that probably need to be pulled. I'm going through this kind of fast because it's starting to rain here. I got a blueberry that I still need to get in the ground. Sunflowers here. I didn't point out the sunflowers out front. And uh, radishes and more radishes. Half these radishes bolted because it's been so bloody hot lately. Uh, beans. And then there's the huge giant pumpkin. So. I've got one pumpkin that's flowered there, but I think that one's gonna get plucked because it looks like this guy actually took, I did pollinate this one uh, with a uh, male plant that was, a male flower I should say, that was just getting ready to uh, pop. So I kind of popped it early, but it looks like there was enough pollen to get that going. 
So uh, giant pumpkin is doing quite well. You can see uh, I've buried some of the root, like a tomato or a cannabis plant. If you bury the uh, the stem, or uh, I shouldn't say root, if I bury the stem or the stalk, you're going to get extra rooting out of there. So that's what I've done here. More tomatoes. More tomatoes. I got some beets going on in the front here. I got a squash plant here as well as a bunch of corn and well, my marigolds, they grew really tall and some of them kind of fell over. So, and uh, well, let me show you what's going on and of course the hoop house. More plants. And the autos. Just lean that back there. So, let's see, it is really starting to come down here, here so I'm gonna be quick. Uh, Pink Panama from Mephisto, Wedding Thrasher from Wildwood. And as you can see, we got bugs all over the place too. Um, there was definitely thrips in here. I've seen a couple other bugs. I've been doing the best I can with organic pest control, but I don't know if I'm gonna be losing the battle or not. Um, needless to say, yeah, lots of pest pressure here you're outside. I've got cucumaris, that's what's hanging in these little satchels here um, to deal with the thrips, but uh, yeah, bugs, no good. Anyway, guys, let's go inside the room because it's raining out here. So, inside. The grow room. 11 foot by 5 foot, uh, 55 square feet of space, and uh, I've got it pretty packed. So, uh, yeah, what are we doing in here? We're running three grassroots fabric pot beds a 2x4, a 2x4, and a 3x3. Three three. This 3x3 three three is in a tent because of reasons. Um, I actually kind of regret having this in a tent now because it makes accessing things in there a lot more difficult, but at the same time, if I want to close this space up, I can, and sometimes I do. So this space is as fully automated as I can get it right now, minus a few things. I'm running blue mats in all these beds. That takes care of the automated watering. And I'm using Inkbird controllers. So let me uh, go over the heating and cooling system first. So all the heating and cooling is tied off of this controller here, okay? Uh, it looks kind of weird because the frame rate from the camera is different than the refresh rate on the LEDs. But basically, this guy controls this AC unit and this heater down here on the ground. Now, I want to point out that this is a big 4,000 watt heater that you normally wouldn't be able to plug into an Inkbird outlet because they're only rated for typically 10 amps, but they do have a couple other ones. So this guy here is actually powered off of, well, let me show you up top here, this breaker, uh, sorry, this relay circuit here. So I've got a line coming up here, and this is just from a little 12 volt AC adapter. And what happens is when the ink bird kicks this thing on, that's just over here, you can see I've got this plugged in right here, and you can't really see it, it's just sitting down there. But this little AC adapter, this turns on, which then applies power to the relay, which actually turns on the 220 20 amp circuit, which is running off all this cable. And that's what's actually powering the heater. So my heat and my temperature are controlled off that Inkbird controller. It's pretty straightforward. I never really muck with it, um, with the exception of if I need to heat up this space because I've got a little bit too much humidity. Speaking about humidity now, I've got Inkbird controllers for humidity as well. Those actually, that one's sitting up top here. Uh, you can't really, oh no, sorry, that one's on center top here. That one's sitting over here. <laughs> I know my space so well, guys. So right now we're sitting just a little humid because I've got things turned off because I'm filming. And if you're wondering why I've got socks, well, that's to block the uh, LEDs. I'll just put that back on. So my setup is not exactly the most conventional when it comes to humidity and dehumidity. Dehumidifier. I got a couple of humidifiers here that, I'll be honest, I haven't really had to run these in quite a while because the moisture coming off these beds from the plants transpiring and whatnot is enough to actually keep this space right where I wanted. And that's usually around the 50 to 60% RH, unless I'm a lot further in flower, then I try to keep it about 50 to 55. But um, again, I've just been in here filming, so things are spiking up a little bit. Um, this usually won't be past about 55 right now because these are about a week from finishing. We'll talk about that a bit more here. So, um, yeah, heat, humidity, um, dehumidity. I actually use my exhaust fan here as the dehumidifier. It's a little bit different, but because it's so dry here where I'm at in Alberta, um, 
all I have to do is basically kick this thing on for a minute, two minutes, three minutes, and it drops the humidity right down because I'm typically pulling in a lot of dry air. Although this week and last week we've been getting a bit of rain, so that kind of causes this to go on more often than it needs to, but it's not too bad. So this is an eight inch blower motor uh, going through eight inches of ducting, blah, 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 blah. Lots of exhaust space. I got a hurricane fan on the wall there. I got a another little wolf, uh, wolf fan, oscillating fan down there. I've got a couple AC fans, uh, AC power fans, sitting down there, and um, these just push air around. You can see I've got another one right, right there. So these push air around the space, as well as another fan up there. And these again, they just move air around the space. So lots of airflow there. So I mean, that's that's sort of the gist of it. Um, the beds themselves, I've actually got sitting here on trays. And these trays are filled with uh, hydro tin pebbles. So if I do have a runaway with the blue mats, I'm covered in that regard. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty simple system, works pretty well. Um, oh, I didn't really touch on this. Uh, this is my watering bucket. So I will put water in here and I will pull it all up through this hose and it goes up through this hose here and oh, scrape the fan with the camera. And I got the Blue Mats Reservoir sitting up there and that holds, well, it'll hold up to 27 gallons, but I'll only put ever 15 in it because, well, I don't want it to fall off the wall. So, but this is this is super sturdy. Uh, I got an air pump up here if I do any teas in this space. I don't do a lot of those. So, um, yeah, that's that's the space. Uh, we do have this TS-1000. This will get replaced with a different light here shortly. Um, I was just doing some finishing stuff in here and I had to get rid of one of the big lights because it was so stinking hot in here. Uh, we went through that heat wave. That's last week's video, guys. Go check it out. So, beds are empty. Um, well, at least this one is. Um, more cucumeris in here. I uh, typically get thrips issues around July, August, so this year I'm trying to be a little bit more proactive. Talking on the beds themselves and the plants, well, next round. I want to show you guys something that I did here. So this plant is a, uh, this is the Taffy Blue Dream cross here. Um, I've just finished bucking her up and I got some uh, buds I'm going to be trying to squish here very soon. She performed really well. Um, but very, very ignorant about topping. So the first time I ran this plant, it was just it was just a straight run, no real training. I just wanted to see what kind of quality it was like and if I wanted to run it again. Quality was good, looks great, decided to run it again. <laughs> but she did not want to top and the LST was even tough. So what I did was I planted her at a 45 degree angle. This was a couple days ago. And you can see I've got all these stems, they're all starting to come up. So. Canopy's being built that way, and should be no issue. I've got canopy clips all over the place here, um, spreading out that canopy until it works its way up until the scrognet. Otherwise, we've got the Laughing Buddha Sour Diesel Cross here. That was looking a touch deficient. I let this thing go a little too long without top dressing it in veg. Not really a concern. It'll be fine. It'll be bouncing back. It, next week's update, this thing's going to be huge and looking great. Empty. I just finished chopping down all these plants. Um, reset the bed here in the next couple days and uh, we'll go again. Uh, I've had some questions about how I do my bed reset. So what I'm going to do is I will take, I will chop down all this cover crop and then I'm going to kind of dig that in under these rice hulls as well as pull some of these rice hulls back. Then I'm going to add in some compost, add in some dry amendments, add in some castings. Put the race holes back on with that green matter now in there, as well as doing some um, more cover crop. We'll plant some more seeds and whatnot. Basically, just reset this bed, and I'll plant more in it. Mm, I don't know, probably next weekend. That's what I just did here. Like I, I chopped down all the cover crop, buried it, added in compost, worm castings, dry amendments, all that stuff. Rice hulls on top, planted plants. I expect to see things popping here from the top here in terms of cover crop in the next couple days. Um, Guys, not exactly the right way to do it in that sense if you're doing living soil. Um, a lot of people will do cover crop, let it grow for a while, then chop it, let it decompose in the soil. I've been playing. I've been trying things. So far they're going well. This last round in here went excellent. Uh, last but not least, yeah. So what's going on here with the current uh, almost done? Well, here, I'm just going to swing around these. Uh... So purple haze. Looking just great, like really, really good stack, and you can't see it so well. 
Power plant, looking equally as great. Both of these are from ILGM. Um, excellent, excellent genetics from those guys. I haven't really had genetics I've not been pleased with um, from ILGM. That's a tomato. If you've seen previous episodes, of course, the Freak Show mail that I had in here wasn't mail. So he got shot, but I showed you we've got him back. He's in clone form. We're going to be growing him out inside to just get him to uh, flower so we can do some pollination. But this tomato plant was growing underneath there just from the compost that went in, and I'd been letting it grow. I'd been hoping to get a couple tomatoes, but they just don't want to seem to pollinate despite me, well, pollinating them. So I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, this is going to get chopped down here in the next couple days. No tomatoes from it, but I got tomatoes coming outside. And Finally, the critical mass. Um, this is the third run with critical mass. It, beast mode. This plant is just awesome. Smells fantastic. Yields really well. Easy to grow. Can't see not doing this one again. So that being said, guys, that's uh, that's the run. That's the grow room. That's what's going on. Um, contest, guys. July 10th, I'm giving away a pile of stuff, and there's not a ton of entries. So get on over to photosyntech.ca, get in that contest, win some cool stuff like a grassroots 2x4 fabric bed, or some Gaia Green Amendments, or some other cool stuff. Anyway, this is the grow room, this is the tour, the garden was outside. Guys, I'm Matt, this is Photosyntech. We out.